very good morning and welcome to episode 205 of the Stratycast. And today, I'm your host, Brian Murphy. I'm back on the road before the season begins for what's been billed as the biggest game of the season before it even starts. I'm in the car heading up to Dublin from Limerick to the United Legends game against Bally Fremont Sports Club. Now, it doesn't get much bigger than this, folks. I mean, we've got a star studded lineup, and one of the one of the big name players, of course, is the one and only Yip Yapstam, a hero to many, a cult figure to most. He's been joined by one of my personal cult heroes and someone I've had a strange love affair with since he joined the club and left it subsequently, Mr. Karl Paborski. I'd argue with any man had nicer hair than Noel Hargreaves. Chucky Brian McClare, Paul Parker, Eric Jimba Jimba, so good they named him twice. Mr. Frank Stapleton, Keith Gillespie, Clayton Blackmore, Chris Eagles, and Lee Martin. They all line out today for the United Legends team of the cold cut. And you probably weren't counting how many players I named there, but I named 10. And of the 10 players I named, they're all outfield players. So there's a rather strange anomaly to today's show because not only am I heading up to this fantastic day ahead where there's a meet and greet organised before the game. We have the game itself, we've got drinks with the players afterwards and then we've got a fantastic gala dinner in the Clayton Hotel. Any football team needs 11 players and one of the key players, potentially the most important player if I was being honest about it, is the goalkeeper. Now, not many people know who the goalkeeper is today, it hasn't been announced, it's been kept hush hush, but by the time you're listening to this, it would have broken the internet. The goalkeeper for today is the United Legends team. He's one of the most skilled, physically, dominant, talented, prowess, intelligent goalkeepers in the modern game. There's none other than me. Um, a 40 year old plumber with bad knees. I might have had a few cans of cider last night in typical Paul Gascoigne style preparation for a football match. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been given, I've been bestowed the honour of representing the team. And going out with these boys having a having a game, so should lead to a rather interesting day ahead. I won't lie, it's something I've very much been looking forward to since I was invited to do so. And it should be good crack. So big thank you to the lads, Ron and Dave and them in Bally for asking me to do this. Um, it's cool. It should be a cl- it should be a class day. Some great names heading up as well. Some some great lads. Oh, playing in the day as well. Tyg and Derry Fleming from Kerry, two extremely, extremely funny gentlemen. Or Colgan, who's absolutely fucking hilarious. Uh, a couple of more names around with this. That nasty fella is playing. Um, yeah, should be a laugh. So, the plan is hit the road up here about two and three quarters hour, two and three quarter hours of a drive. Get to the hotel chuck the bags in get the gear bag and get collected at 12 and head to the Manhattan bar for a meet and greet and hopefully I have the willpower to avoid having what's known as the cure and I avoid having a pint of cider to to get me going and get the old pre-match nerves off and with any luck I will play a bit of football at 3 o'clock then it's off to the boozer for a good old fashioned session and a dinner in the Clayton music and drinking until late and if my plan goes according to plan I might grab one or two of these lads for a quick chat and see how they've been getting on in their recent years and what their thoughts are of the season ahead so strap yourself back in there make a cup of I will talk to you soon.
We're in Tim Young's bar next to the meet and greet in Manhattan. The streets are littered with red. It's a sea of United fans. And they're all waiting for the big event, the players. Who, funnily enough, are not here. Because Michael O'Leary, the shitbag, is after delaying the whole thing by delaying a flight coming into Dublin. The local boys, the likes of Nasty and them are probably down the street kicking ball and stuff. But Yaps, Dam and them boys, they're still not to be seen. But don't fear, I have celebrities in my midst beside me in Tim Young's. Introducing first this man, a myth, a legend, a dangerous human being for all accounts. The leader, the foot soldier and the warrior of the Clare Supporters Club, Mr. Noel Kelly. Noel, we're back again after a summer's break. I haven't had the pleasure of your company, but here we are together again with pint in hand. How are we feeling? Ah, oh, it's sure, grand, yeah, yeah. It's great to be back. Summers, schools are only, schools are only back. Football's are only back. Proper football. And uh, we're in the heart to belly firm. Sure, what could go wrong? Apart from everything, I suppose. Um, did you do any Euro matches at the summer? Did you watch? Not, not you do them, but did you watch any of them? Did you pay much attention to the games? Or is international football not for you? I've seen a fair few of them, yeah. I didn't actually catch the final, no, but uh, we were all happy with the end result, really. Or, as you know. <laughs> for, for any of our followers there in the UK, and um, that's just, look, we're going to edit this out. We were not happy. We were disgusted that you lost. <laughs> but on a more serious note, um, there was very few players lit up the Euros. Though. It was kind of weird, wasn't it? Usually you, you come back after a, Euro com- a European competition in internationals. You could pick five or six superstars and all the big teams would be after them. It's kind of a strange tournament. that he, Even the big players like Mbappe didn't light it up. It was, there was no real standouts, was there? No, I think uh, it started off kind of well. Um, you know, the first couple of matches and you talk, oh, it's going to be a goal fest and all that. And then um, it's just kind of, it's like the players ran out of steam or something. I think they're just, like, there's an extra round of games there now and that's, like, it's probably unnecessary. Well, obviously they're going to do it because you've got 24 teams and it's just all about money really there. So, at, at Spain were a like, standout team, like, they deserved it, hands down, like, um, your man Yamal was brilliant and uh, Fabian Ruiz, um, and Nico Williams, they were the standout ones. I don't want to really say Rodri, like, because he's city scumbag, back, but there you go. Yeah, look, I think the, I think the Euros it kind of showed us that the, bur- the burnout in football is evident. Players are playing too much football, but things come around quick again. Next week, we're back, Community Shield, heading to Wembley. Um, it's like we didn't really get a break. It's, it's not too long ago that we were, we were in Wembley, and all of a sudden, we're back again, and the whole football season and our, our travels across Europe following the Reds begins again but the reason we're here today we're going to play a bit of football I believe uh, Yapstam, Karl Paborski, Keith Gillespie list as long as my armour players really looking forward it kicks off about 3 o'clock and then we're going we're heading to a, a gala dinner later on tonight uh, one of the organisers who's in our company here having a few beverages is after legging it out the door and fear that he might be brought onto this but Ronan, don't you worry. Before the night's out, I'm sure with a bit more lubrication on board, we'll we'll convince you to get talking to us. But yeah, um, what do you, what do you, what do you reckon today? What are you what are you looking forward to today? Obviously, look, these lads aren't in their prime and they're not in the the height of their careers, but they're still well able to kick ball. And there's a couple of these boys that still do a job. You looking forward to seeing Big Yap? Oh yeah, Yap's the stand out, isn't he? Like, like the absolute star of the show, I'd say. Um, yeah, true. Well, my motto is anyone anyway, ever length of time I'm playing is just give it to the quick lads. So I hope Keith Gillespie's still quick and Chris Eagles because the flying wingers and that. <laughs> You're planning on just sitting deep, tucking in and just popping it off to the lads. Let them do the work. Let the ball do the work. Yeah, I'm going to do the Casemiro roll, you know, like kind of like, oh, uh, I don't know. I think, I, think, uh, I think your legs might be a little bit better than Casemiro and Ericsson's at the moment. But Mr. Kelly, it's a pleasure as always to be with you. I'm sure we're going to have quite a good night. Up the Reds and up the Clare Support Club. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll chat you soon. After an unbelievable clean sheet, which was prefaced with six pints of cider inside in Tim Young's bar beside the Manhattan. <laughs> you can smell the drink <laughs> wafting off him. Liquor is dripping out of me in sweat. I'm with two of the most famous men in Ireland and two of my favourite people. <laughs> They're not too far away from me at home. Ty Fleming and Derry Fleming. Ty, oh, how are we getting on? I'm not too bad. It's a fucking fantastic day here. Like, what's the language? Sorry please? there, Dad. He's so, still sorry. on my case, like. Derry, there's kids listening. Yes. Kids, oh. But come here, uh, fantastic day. You should have seen this fella in goals, lads. I'm telling you, he missed out going pro anyway. Oh, 
Oh! The replacement nearly dropped the clanger. The replacement nearly left in the clanger. But I might uh, have to go back in again. <laughs> Quick, get on the gloves. Dyke, but, how, uh, how are you finding playing with the legends? Good crack. Come here. It's yap stem there, man. 50 50 there. He absolutely put your man in his arse. That's, he, it's a sight to behold. Like, he's I'm not spraying missing. balls around the place like it's 20 years ago. Bring him back, I'd say. 100%. With the young fella Yori. What's his name? Lenny Yoro. And Lenny's injured. I bring him, him back. Gap. Bring him back. Yeah. He'll fill a stamp. Yeah, yap stem. Get him in there, I'd say. But no, it is amazing. Come here. Childhood dream stuff here trying to play with this. Humbly. Oh yeah, Derry. How did you get? How are we getting on? Are you enjoying the day? Oh, she's unbelievable. Like I'm, you know, I came off there now just for a bit of a rest. I'm totally exhausted. I thought I pulled the hamstring, but I decided it wasn't. You were, you were up and down the line like a greyhound at the racing, winding for A greyhound. He ma, was doing ma, a big diving ma, last, yesterday. Ma, yeah, he broke his ankle. Master McGrath, get a look in. Yeah. McGrath wouldn't get near you. For God's sake. Oh, 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 hang on. Here's the Epstein crunch. Oh, oh. oh. Yo, man, is after dropping the Epstein? Oh, I say he's dropped. There's no recording of that one. I'm telling all these young fellas, uh, there's no stuff in them at all. Nah, they're nothing. They're only fragile. Nothing. Fragile. Very fragile. They're not made like they used to be. Oh, not at all. Derry Fleming and Ty Fleming, you're gentlemen. Thank you for having a chat with us. We're in the Clayton Hotel at the gala dinner today for Bally Firmers, Man United Supporters Club. Big day, unbelievable day, great organisation, and I'm pleased to be joined with what I would say the star of the show, but obviously everyone who was here today is so appreciated. And with Yap Stam, Yap, did you enjoy yourself today? Well, I did very much. You know, it's always good to play for a good cause. It's always good to see uh, the Irish as well you know they're a passionate people they love football they love United which is of course very positive and very good we all love United we all hope, we're all hoping that they're going to be doing very well but um, most important you know today was a very special day I think not only for the uh, for the people over, uh, over here from, from the event but for us for us as ex-players as well you know we love to come over we love to compete we love to play um, and, and especially with you guys as well you know and, and, and like you're saying as well if, if we can do this for like a good cause as well which is very important as well then we're, we're all very happy because it's all about the people I'm not going to keep it too long because obviously you're heading home now but the one thing I noticed today I was so lucky to play in goals behind the app today and I noticed a strange thing through history Rio Ferdinand has been labelled like a ball playing centre back Yeah, maybe didn't get that same appreciation for his skills but today <laughs> it was like watching a quarterback you were marshalling defence and next you're pinging balls left right is it something you were underrated for? Your passing? I, I don't know. You know, the, the, the thing is, when you come to United, um, and especially when you've been grown up in Holland, you know, in Holland the centre back is totally different than uh, than over here. With all due respect, in the UK, because in Holland the centre back needs to do everything. You need to be able to pass. You need to be able to dribble. You need to be able to score. You need to be able to uh, defend one v ones in a big space. You need to be able to dribble forward, go into the midfield to create that extra man. Um, but but when Fergie came over, of course, so Alex and, and he brought me into the squad. You know, he gives me a task in, in how to play and what you need to do, and you stick to it because it's it's for the importance of the team. Um, but all the things that you mentioned before, I could easily do. And, and I've done it with the national team, I've done it in Holland, I've done it in Italy as well, where I played. But it's all about the manager and what he is expecting from a player, you know. So I won't say I'm underestimated for, uh, underestimated for it, you know. I think everybody who knows me, uh, they all know that I can play and, and I, can, I can do that. Um, I'm not going to go into who's the best in doing so, you know, because <laughs> that's not up to me. But um, the thing is, it's, it's, not, it's not all about the, the individual. It's about the team. It's about uh, making progress as a team. It's about uh, winning trophies as a team, and that's what we did. You know, we've we've won the treble as a team. Nobody else has done it at United, so that tells you something about the qualities of these players in that squad. Um, you know, but United, of course, is a very is a is a very great club. It's a big club. They make changes, uh, and hopefully, they're going to be doing well. Hopefully, they get back to the level that we all want to see them play and winning the league again. But it's not going to be easy because there's a lot of competition. But um, We'll be there to support them together with you guys. I'm going to leave you go with two very quick questions, two quick answers. <laughs> you only set like 30 <laughs> seconds. It's about four minutes already. Number one, where do we finish the season? And number two, when do we see you again in managerial positions or what's the future hold for you? Uh, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're always hoping um, that the club is going to be ending up at, uh, at the top of the league. You know, United is all about, and, and well, that's how I know United, it's all about winning the league. And anything less is not good enough. And uh, we can speak about, okay, you know, oh, it's nice to be in the top four, it's nice to be, but then we're kidding ourselves. 
I think we need to make sure that we're going to be winning the league, and that's what we're all working for. Even after a couple of years with a new with a new manager, you know, uh, they need to invest, they need to make changes, and the manager needs to uh, get his team to play in a certain way, you know, to to be able to compete with the best in the Premier League, and that's what United is standing for. That's what we need, all need, are, are looking forward to. So, so hopefully they can uh, they can do that, and that's so we need to wait and see now in this season how it's gonna how it's gonna end up. Yep, Sam, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank Good night. you. It's not every day you hear from Yap Sam. Brian, I, I couldn't help but giggle when Yap reminded you about the 30 seconds that you had to plug him for a bit longer. I thought that was brilliant and bold, but well done on getting the interview. Tell us about the whole day and, and what led to that. What a day, Dale. What a day. I was asked a few weeks ago to do this by Cavo and Ronan in the Ballyfermer Sports Club. And initially, I thought they were taking the piss, to be honest with you. Like, I thought they were winding me up. And then they were kind of pure serious, saying, no, 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 we were actually 100% serious. We were going to play in goals for the United Legends team. And I was like, Jesus Christ, like, I'm only after playing Old Trafford a few weeks back. Can this summer get any better? And I still kind of didn't really know what to expect. They'll hit up. Do you know, like, I'd, I'd seen the schedule of the day and things, but obviously until you're there, you still don't really know what's going to happen. But we'll end it up and... The meet and greet was slightly delayed due to the fact a Ryanair flight with a few of the United players on it got delayed. There was easily 250 people outside that bar in the Manhattan waiting to get in. Rather than stand outside and wait to get in or even head in before him, myself, Noel Kelly and Ronan Lynch headed next door to Tim Young's bar and had five or six pint bottles of cider in preparation for a football game that I thought was delayed until five o'clock, which actually kicked off at 3.15 instead of 3 p.m. So that was a bit... Any aspiring footballers are listening to the podcast. We wouldn't advise that kind of pre-match routine. No, do you know what? I actually, I'm, I'm the complete opposite. I'd fully advise it because if you feel any way yeah. nervous whatsoever about meeting players like, like Yap Stam is a hero to me. And let's get it straight out. He's a hero to me. He was a hero to me when he played for the club. If you feel a little bit nervous about meeting someone like that, even at my age, lash back six pint bottles to Clonmel's finest and you'll be grand. Maybe hundred percent. One of the things I picked up on from the weekend that you shared was the the match day squad, which was presented in a beautifully laid out match preview or program. The first four names from the Manchester United Legends Eleven feature Brian Murphy, Yap Stam, Frank Stapleton, and Brian McClare. People must have been wondering who was that goalkeeper and when did he play for United. They were wondering who was Frank Stapleton because he didn't turn up, and and, and Neil Webb came in his place. So. I think I was, I was probably all right, but the, a lot of them were saying, who's this Stapleton fellow, where is he? But no, no, I, I was grand. I, Dale, I won't lie to you. I was on, um, so they split, it, they split it into three different games, right? So I, I was meant to play game number one. That was it. Um, so it came off after game number one, which is essentially like a half time. You're standing on the sideline and you're all having a bottle of water and things. And kids are jumping over the fence. Now, most of them are trying to get pictures and stuff with that nasty chap. He's some lad who does some, I don't know, I don't know, food reviews or something. I don't know anything about him. Um, he was very popular with the kids. But they're coming over asking me to, to sign their jerseys. <laughs> and I look, their mums and dads are with them. So a, a group of them come over and approach me like, can you sign my jersey? And I looked at them and I was like, lads, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm an absolute nobody. You do not want me signing your jersey. It will, it will decrease the value of what you're wearing instead of increasing it. There is no point me signing it. And their mum and dad were smiling. And lads, young lads asked me for, me, me for my keeper gloves. I was like, they cost me 57 euro. Fuck off and buy your own gloves. You mad? I'm not picking up these fucking gloves. It was an arms class. You must be mad because I was watching even the clip of you coming out. Like, I know it's only a, a charity match or a friendly match and these players have retired, but these are people you've watched as heroes for years. You must be still pinching yourself a little bit. I walked into the dressing room. I didn't, you know, you don't, you absolutely don't know what to expect. You have no idea what's going to happen next. And I walk into the dressing room and next thing I'm sitting down. Paul Parker nestles in beside me. He's number two spot. I'm number one spot. And we just had, we just had chatting, just complete, total, and utter normal chat as, I, as you would with anybody else. You're looking around. Paworski's getting a rub down on the table in front of you. Yeah, Stam's walking around half naked. There's just lads strolling around, having the chat, bottles of water and, and bits of fruit and stuff. And, just total, natural, normal conversation. Like, it, there was no airs or graces. They're the nicest, most down there bunch of lads. That, now, I was lucky. I knew Keith Gillespie. I know Keith Gillespie previously, so 
I, at least I had a friendly face that I could lean on if I didn't feel nervous, but I, I didn't, not even for a second. I mean, myself and Gillespie had a good old chat. And it was good crack. Noel Kelly was inside in the dressing room with me. He was on the team as well. Um, Tyg and Derry Fleming, who are two of Ireland's funniest people, were in the dressing room and they'd fucking light up any room they're inside and they're hilarious. So it was just the dressing room for them to jump around at. There was no bat, but there was there was quite a bit of dancing. I think Derry went in and warmed up the, the Bally Farmer team by doing a bit of Kaylee Lee dancing from so it was it was brilliant. Yeah. No, it, it was it was A one and um I want they, they take it seriously enough. They don't it's not something they do when they don't bother their ass or just come over half arsed. They do take it seriously as in like right lads we're going out quick passing and a bit of a talk and you know, there's proper football discussion before you go out there and do it and get out on the pitch and you'd know instantly they're organised. The way they play football, you might think the likes of Brian McClare, who's pushing on in years now, or even Gillespie, who's who's not the youngest lad anymore, or Clayton Blackmore, you might start thinking these boys have much to offer because obviously they're in their older years and in, in their careers and things, but they're so clever. You can see them playing football passes directly to their toe, and it's just a case of shouting instructions, left, right, open up the body, man on. But the, 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 the close touches, like Brian McClare hasn't lost a millimetre of his touch or his awareness. Clayton Blackmore, one of the funniest stories actually from the match itself. So I was I was a little bit glued to my line for one particular incident and Clayton Blackmore came under pressure. So he was at left back and ball came over him. He was absolutely fucked for pace. There's no way he's getting to this ball. Your man zipped past him. I wasn't going to make it in time. Your man miskicked it. Went out over the sideline. Whew, thank God my clean sheet's intact. Clayton came over to have a little word at me. He pulled me aside and goes, keeper, come here. I said, what's wrong with this chap? He says, you need to be off your line. You need to be out here, almost like a sweeper. You can't be doing this. You've got to get off your line. Don't be getting comfortable back there. And bit of a word in my ear. And I was like, Jesus, sorry. He went up. Within 30 seconds, he went straight up and stuck the sweetest goal I've ever seen in my life, top corner. And I was almost waiting for him to look back, give me the finger and say, now look, this is how we do it around here, which he didn't. So I had a good laugh with him about it at the dinner that night. But they are. They take it serious. It's not. It's not a messing a joke with these boys. They want to. They want to impress. And they want to put on a show. I did. A, I spoke to Andy Cole about the the Legends match against Celtic, which is coming up at Old Trafford in September, and I asked him that about these games. You know, taking it seriously and and lads that are years retired and the standards they play. I one of the thing. A few of the things he said was, they never lose certain things like a touch or ability. They all. They'll always have that. Um. He said competitively, they look at it as in it's a day out for them back with old friends. So they look at they look forward to that. Secondly, there's fans coming that have been supporting them for so many years, paying a bit of money to watch them, and they want to perform, they want to to do to do the best they can. So it, it's just an all round good day for them. It's an unbelievable buzz, yeah. And you can feel that off them that they want to put on, not say put on a show, but they don't want to. I suppose they don't want to disappoint people that are coming to watch them that they don't play well or they don't represent themselves well. If someone in particular wanted to go see Brian McClare, a big Chucky fan from back in the day, they want to see Chucky doing something that they can cheer for. Well, Chucky wants the same thing. He wants them to look at his performance in the day and go, oh, geez, wasn't the class to see him, rather than walking away going, oh, geez, he's crippled and he's not able to play football anymore. That's not the way they are. Like They're they're really good. But like Even their fitness and stuff, they're, they take it so seriously, getting... The rub downs and the massages before the game, the strapping that's needed before it. They get out there and they put it in. Like Paul Parker got a right dirty little one in the ankle, and we came off afterwards, and he was like, "I'm not messing. I'm absolutely fucking dying. This is after killing me. It's, I'm after getting creased." So it's full blooded, you know. And that's very good. Did, did Brian Murphy require any rub down pre match rub downs? <sighs> no, Brian Murphy wasn't able to feel his muscles pre match because he declined metal apples on him. But I can tell you I'm one thing. <laughs> yeah, the following day. I'll tell you something straight, Dale. I am, um, this is, I, I'm crippled. I'm absolutely crippled after, I'm in retirement. I can't do it anymore. My body is in bits. I'm as stiff as a poker. I don't know how these boys are doing it. Well, you've, you've had two big appearances this summer. Your first at, at Old Trafford, and then amongst a team of United legends. Well done. Um, it's a, definitely a day you'll never forget, but but fair play as well for, for going off and, do, and doing the podcast and getting those recordings, I'm sure. Our listeners are, are, are going to, or will have, in, at this point, enjoyed it. You can finish it off by giving your threat about how people or why people should subscribe to the Stratocast. So take the mic. Firstly, if you want to follow Dale, it's O'Donnell Dale on Twitter. Follow the Stratocast. Follow Stratty News. Give all the ex-players that I play with a follow. And 
give the likes of Ty Fleming and Derry Fleming a follow. I'm day tripping red on Twitter for all my sins and all my intents and purposes. You probably don't want to follow me. But if you don't follow this podcast, give it a five likes or five stars or whatever the thing is and whatever platform you're using, a good review and maybe even a share. I am going to force you to smell the socks that I wore at that match on the weekend repeatedly. And trust me, after six pints of cider and a sweat night it outside there with the nerves looking in front of me at Yapstam giving me thunder eyes for almost misplacing a pass, you do not want that aroma. It is not oh the lovely, it's oh the Jesus. See you next week. Thanks for listening. We might start losing subscribers with these tricks. See you next week. Cheers then. <laughs>